Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. As you can see from the thumbnail and title, today we're going to be 3D printing some brackets. So, why are we 3D printing brackets? Before we get into the main content of this video, I want to give a little overview of the need for these brackets and why I've chosen 3D printing opposed to another manufacturing process. So let's take a look at the problem. So, these brackets, what am I trying to achieve and what am I trying to fix? What's the end goal? So obviously, Everyone with a home desk knows they get cramped pretty quickly. You put a few screens on there and sometimes it's hard, depending on your room layout or your office layout, to maximise where you put things and get everything to fit nicely. On this L-shaped desk, obviously I have my two screens, my printer. One big issue is my laptop because it ends up sitting in front of this screen. So long-term solution and an ideal solution is a bigger desk and maybe an actual laptop stand. I can't physically do that. So what I'm thinking is, for short term solution, I want to be able to extend this backwards, and I'll put a close up now, and have that sit slightly off the desk. So that means I have more desk space for my keyboard and mouse, and yeah, it offsets the screen further back, which would be ideal. So to do that, we're gonna print some brackets that will screw to this desk here. Um, I've whipped up, or I'm gonna make a design in CAD, which you can see behind me. We'll go into more detail on that in a minute. We're gonna 3D print them. I've stuck a lot of fillets on it, some holes in it, and it's quite an interesting design. And we're gonna see how the printer copes with it and if we can get a nice part off the machine. Now that you've hopefully got an idea of what we're trying to achieve, let's head over to the other computer, load the CAD up, and take a look at what we're trying to print. What we have here, is the SOLIDWORKS model. You can see it is overly complex. We have got a pocket in the top, a hole. We have got the supports with holes in the inside and we have got chamfered holes. Um, the majority of the edges are filleted, which I think will be interesting to print. Whether you see that definition on the print is something I'm interested to find out. And obviously, as per the title, the big question, can I print that gap? on the side gusset with that overhang. Will it work? What will be my limiting factor? Will we get a full print of it? And will it be structurally sound? I know you could get some cheap metal brackets, but these are bespoke. They, they're a solution to my problem and I'm looking forward to printing them and seeing how they come out. So let's move on and get these printed. So that was a good overview and a look at the bracket. Once again, like I say, I'm thinking that something's going to go wrong. It's quite complex, a lot of weird fillets. Um, but in terms of filament, uh, if you know me or this channel, I always stick with Prusament. And today, today we're going to be using the PLA in Gentleman's Grey. Quite a nice neutral colour and I think that will look good. So, 3D models done. We've got our filament already. So let's load that into the machine, get the machine all set up, give it a once over, and then we'll revisit and cover our Prusa slicer settings. As shown in some previous 3D printing videos, there's a procedure to take your SOLIDWORKS file, convert to SDL, and then you can load it straight into the Prusa Slicer. So that's what we've done, and the first thing we do is position the part, so we stick that bottom face down. I've done that because that makes the most sense, and then the part's got a nice base to build off and can work up from there. Um, keeps the height quite low and spreads it nicely across the, across the bed. But with this print, I had to kind of think about what I was trying to achieve, obviously, I don't want to spend a long time printing it, but I want to make sure I get a detail. So we actually went for a 0.15 layer height, um, and then we left the infill on the standard 15%. Um, I think that it kind of self-generates based on your shape and design. So 15% infill and a 0.15 layer height, and this is what it looks like once you've sliced it. So looks reasonable, I think. Obviously, 
in hindsight, I would have spent more attention at these overhang areas, but looks like it's going to be okay. Obviously, I was quite concerned about printing time, and this was not a really long print time. So, for comparison, if you went from a 0.15 to a 0.1 layer height, you almost double the printing time. So, yeah, this is what we were looking at. I was happy of this, and I was ready to get this exported and onto a USB ready to go into the machine. But you can see here, this is the crucial point. That print in there, you've got an overhang, you've got a split joint, it's kind of meeting up. How that works, we will find out. So let's get this printed. So guys, um, as we said at the start, we were going to push the design a little bit and I think we're at the point of failure with this print. So let's have a look where I think it's failing. So where our gaps in the middle are, you can see the path is, it's got so thin, it has no support and it is starting to just lift or move. So there's two things I can kind of do. One is redesign this out these parts or less parts we could flip the part that way so it's standing tall so there's less of an overhang or we look at some supports but I'm not sure how you support this as it is in the center of the truck shaft so we'll have a little think we're gonna let this go until it really does fall apart and then go from there So now that the print is done and off the machine, let's have a quick look around it and see what worked and what didn't. Um, first glance is just from a isometric view like this, it looks pretty good if I get my camera to focus. Um, obviously the big issues being the supports here. Obviously the supports had the overhang and with the overhang, I'll stick a close up here. You did get it, it went really bumpy and rough just where it was drooping and then laying, putting a new layer on top. So that's visually an issue. Structurally, it feels pretty solid. Um, the top finish is really nice where it's touched the bed and overall it looks really good. I'm particularly impressed with the countersunk holes. Um, those features came out a lot better than I thought. But moving forward, obviously I'm printing two of these. I think I'll keep this one and in the next one, I'm gonna drop my layer height so I was at 0.15, I'm gonna to go to 0 
and I'm going to change my infill. So hopefully that small layer height will allow it to stay together slightly better and it avoids it eliminates the need of supports or anything like that. So first one, 80% success, functional, but aesthetically it could be better. But nonetheless, let's move on to the next one. Um, it's a much longer print. It's funny how much the layer height changes it. This was 3045 at 0.15% with 15% infill. At 0.1 with 10% infill, we're looking around six and a half hours. So that may be a print for another day, but don't worry, we'll get it done and then we'll compare the two. So take two with the different layer height. Obviously it's a much longer print and right now it's not cured it. So we still have that lip standing up as you can see. But you know what, I'm gonna leave it and let it print because it, I just wanna compare them, see if the layer height actually makes any difference between these two parts or if I need to rethink that overhang or find a better way to do it. So at this point we've printed two brackets, to be completely honest we've had the same issue with them both. In this area here of the overhang it's just not sticking together, it's drooping or rising and then it's leaving us with a really rough edge as I'll stick on the screen now and I've shown before. But yeah we get a really rough inside edge which, do you know what, they are solid and they would work nicely but it's just not fun doing a half hearted job. So what I'm going to do as a solution is get rid of this pocket here and make that solid and print them and just just compare them see how much time that would add would, was there benefit in removing that like do you need to have a pocket there like i'm pretty sure you don't it'll be strong without it but it's nice to question the way you design things and so we're gonna hop back on solidworks modify one of these and print it we're gonna go back to the 0.15 with a really simple infill and just see how quickly we can smash it out because at the moment we've gone from 0.15 to 0.1 and there's been no real gain and we've had three hours of print time so that doesn't that doesn't work for me so yeah let's get that sorted and then get back on the printer right we're back in SolidWorks our favorite place and we have done a quick modification really easy we had an extrusion through the middle so we have just deleted that and gone back to a solid beam but you can see very similar design but completely solid this time so let's see how this turns out so into our revised model of 42% in, we're now starting the actual supports. So let's watch this come to life and see if this works any better. Right, the new version is now finished printing so let's take a look how that's come out and see if we've fixed those issues we had before which I think we will have. So here it is 100% complete obviously much much simpler much cleaner this top edge is nice. You know what this is just a nicer part it has got the thicker layer height but it printed well and yeah look at that that is what we're after, so that is the way to do it. Before we fit them, let's have one last look because they're going to be fitted up soon. These are the two finished parts. Much better without the hole. I was thinking maybe as a compromise you could put round circles here, but you've got a design for its purpose. There is no benefit in having that. It is stronger. These things are absolutely rock solid. I've got two nice fixing points with the countersunk holes. Um, yeah, sometimes you've got to know when to, when to pick your battles, what's worth it, what's not. I know for the future now, unless it's absolutely critical, avoid those sort of overhangs. But yeah, very happy. You can see the finish is top notch. So let's fit these up to the desk and see if they do the really simple job that we're designed to do.
So guys, that is the end of this video. You can see that the brackets fitted nicely and it just makes a bit of a difference to my desk. It makes it easier to put my laptop on, just makes this whole space a bit easier. As I said, it's not a long-term solution, but a really nice fix. I think from this project, we've learned a lot about printing overhangs and when you should use them, do you really need to use them? I think personally, avoid them or pick a very specific angle where you know that it's gonna work. Um, yeah, I think designing for purpose is the main thing. Don't just over design something, over engineer something. Did I care about weight? No, they've worked perfectly fine. They're really structural and they do the job. But the file's available. If anyone wants to use it, just drop me a message or an email or a comment and I'll drop it over to you. It's nothing special, but it may help someone out. You could use it maybe for shelves or whatever you want. But hope you've all enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next video very soon. Take it easy.